the title of this is pH of a buffer, <clears throat> but it doesn't become readily apparent as to why we're taking the cal cal calculating the pH of a buffer in the first place. But it will once you see what's going on. Now this is the most involved type of calculation. This is pretty high level. This is your IB AP exam type of thing, first year university kill you type of calculation. But there's an easy way to break it down for yourself and make it obvious. Well, at least maybe not obvious, but but certainly doable. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take 30 milliliters of 0.1 mole per liter acetic acid, and we're mixing it with. 20 milliliters of 0.1 mole per liter NaOH. Now, when you are looking at that, you're saying to yourself, all right, you're mixing a weak acid with a base there, and here's the deal. I can tell, since the concentrations are equal and these are going to react in a one-to-one -one ratio, I know that 30 milliliters of this is not going to be completely neutralized by 20 milliliters of this chemical. I'm going to have excess CH3COOH left in the end. And so you're saying, oh, okay, wait a minute. I can do questions like that. I can do in excess types of questions. If I've got my net equation here, this is the acetic acid reacting with hydroxide, transfer the pro proton from this Bronsted Lowry acid to this Bronsted Lowry base to form this conjugate base and this conjugate acid. That's what that is. Here's the volumes and the concentrations of both of those chemicals. If I have concentration and volume of both, I'll find the moles of both. When I find the moles of both by multiplying the liters times the moles per liter of each of these chemicals, I'm going to get 0.003 moles of acetic acid and 0.0020 moles of hydroxide. And that means that when these two react, this quantity here completely is going to be consumed by a quantity here of 0 0.002 as well, reacting in a one-to-one -one molish ratio. And you're going to be left with, in excess, 0.00100 moles of acetic acid. Now you're saying, chem guy, hang on, I'm okay with this, because I know then that the concentration of that chemical that's left over in excess, that acetic acid, is going to be that divided by the new volume of the solution, which is 50 milliliters, the 30 and the 20. And when I do that, I'm going to get, in the end, the concentration of 0 0.020, I think the two significant digits, yes, moles per liter of acetic acid. And you're going to say, hey, I can calculate the pH of a weak acid. The pH would actually be equal to the Ka times this concentration here. Take the square root of it, and that's the hydronium, and then that's what you get for the pH, negative log that, and you should get the pH, but it's not that easy. Because here's the thing that you really got to understand why we're going to have to do another board of calculations here. That concentration of acetic acid is left over unreacted here, but the solution doesn't just have acetic acid in it. It's got this starting to form too. How much of this chemical is actually made? It's a weak base. And that weak base is going to influence the pH of the solution. So it's not just the pH of the weak acid that we're calculating. We have to take into account the weak base. So what we do is this. We've got to find a concentration of this so we can do some fancy chemistry. How are we going to do that? Well, first of all, if 0 0.002 here reacts with 0 0.002 here, 0 0.002 here reacts with 0 0.002 here, how much is formed here? Right, 0 0.0020 moles of this forms in solution. That's how much reacts here, that's how much reacts here, there's some left over there, but that's how much is formed there, right? When you divide that by the new volume of the solution, right? you are going to get, that's a moles per liter of that chemical here, that into that is 0 0.040 moles per liter of that chemical. We've now calculated the concentration of a weak acid and its conjugate base ion that forms in solution. That's a buffer. The weak acid and its conjugate base mixed together. This is what, in a titration curve, this would be, we're right in here. We're in the buffer region, so we're calculating the pH of a buffer. So if we're doing that, we need to have a way to be able to calculate this, and there's a couple of ways. There's a long way, and then there's a shortcut. So now that we've established that we have a buffer, 
the first thing, it, okay, for that first part that we just did there was called the stoichiometry part of the buffer calculation. We've done the stoichiometry part. Now we need to understand that we're in a buffer. And a buffer means that we're going to take the weak acid. Well, how do you write a buffer equation? Take the weak acid, add it to water. You take everything and add it to water all the time, right? When you're making an equation. So you're going to take the weak acid, you're going to add it to water. Transfer the proton from the weak acid to the water to make acetate ion and then hydronium. Now here's the thing. We have a buffer. So we have a weak acid and its conjugate base. And we just calculated the concentrations of those now in solution once that mixture took place of the weak acid and the strong base. We got a concentration of 0 0.020 here. And initially we have this here too in an equilibrium. See, usually, you know how it is. We have a concentration here when we go x here and x here after, after they start initially at zeros. But initially, we don't have a zero here. We have 0 0.04. It's like a common ion effect question that we do in an equilibrium problem, right? And this is an equilibrium problem, and it is a common ion. But the deal, well, it's not really a common ion. What it is is, it's that we have an initial concentration of a chemical that is a product. So now look. We still have this concentration here, and it still has to dissociate to make something of the hydronium, because we don't have hydronium yet. We have a mixture of these two, so we have a zero here. The reaction has to shift that way. So the change is going to be minus x here, plus x here, and plus x here. So at equilibrium, we are going to have 0 decimal 0, 0, 2, 0, minus x, 0 0.040 plus x, and x. Now, can we set this up where... Put this, here, put this into the numerator, this into the denominator, it equals the Ka of this, and then solve. Absolutely. And we can do all of those equilibrium steps, and you can, no problem too. There's just a shortcut that, that once you know that you've got a buffer here with a concentration of the weak acid and the weak base present, you can eliminate all of this and just use a formula that Henderson and Hasselbalch came up with called the Henderson-Hasselbalch reaction, or equation, sorry. Now, that equation looks like this, and, and by the way, you're going to say, well, I'd rather just do all of this equilibrium steps and plug it all in. Yeah, well, go ahead. But IB exams and AP exams, they give you this formula. So use it if they give it to you. And what it is, is the pH of a buffer, this is for just, this is a buffer, equals the pKa, which is the negative log of the Ka, that's what the P stands for, plus the log of the concentration of the weak base over the concentration of the weak acid. All of that equilibrium stuff that we do and all of this icebox stuff is actually abbreviated into here. When you know you've got a buffer and you've got the concentration of that weak base and weak acid in solution, you can just use this formula. So the pH here is going to equal the negative log of the Ka of acetic acid, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, oh, sorry, plus the log What's the concentration of the weak base? 0 0.040. Concentration of the weak acid, 0 decimal 0, which really is going to equal 2, right? It's the log of 2. It's going to be added to this. And when you do all of that math, you get a pH of 5.05 when you do all of that using this formula called the Henderson Hasselbalch. And by the way, if you would have just stopped at calculating the concentration in excess of the acetic acid, if you take the pH of that chemical right there, you get four something. And it's not accurate because you see you have a base that's mixed into that solution, right? And that base is going to raise the pH up a little higher to about 5.05. .05. And that is the pH of this system that ends up being a buffer. Whew, it's an involved calculation, sure. But when you recognize that you have an excess amount of a weak acid in solution and you've got a presence of conjugate base ion, you need to do the pH of a calculation of the buffer.